increase sales in real estate? Probate real estate. That's what we're talking about today and we'll get started right after this. Hi, I'm Kim Ward. Welcome to my channel. I am a certified probate real estate advisor and developer of probatebiz.com. So as a real estate agent, are you wondering how to increase sales in real estate? Probate real estate training. Just like traditional real estate, I have to work with a lot of players. But what I want is people, players, that have a general idea of probate real estate. So for instance, when I am working with a buyer's agent, I explain to them the difference of a probate transaction versus a traditional transaction. And as I work with the buyer's agents, they really do appreciate being informed of the timelines and what to expect. That way they can explain that to their client. That's how we keep things calm and comfortable. So the next thing is if you have an escrow officer, certain states do not in the United States, but when I'm working with an escrow company, I wanna make sure my escrow officer also has a very clear understanding of the timelines and what's to be expected through a probate transaction versus traditional. I find that having a well-versed escrow officer makes my life a lot easier because that person manages much of the paperwork that needs to be taken care of during the transaction. Next thing is a great title officer. My title officer understands that I primarily do probate transactions and so they are aware that the name of the person signing the contracts is not the name of the person on the title of the home. It's the loved one. So we have appraisers if the person is getting a loan. There are two appraisers attached to a probate sale. One is the probate referee. They are specifically hired by the probate attorney. Their part in the transaction is to appraise the property as of the date of death. And that way there's a general understanding of what the property's value was on the date of death of the decedent. The other appraiser is what we typically know about, which is the appraiser for the buyer's lender. One of the things that I do that I know many people may not do, but I think it's crucial to keeping the transaction moving forward, is to meet the appraiser at the property and make sure that the appraisal comes in at the agreed upon purchase price. The next thing would be the inspectors. I do my best to attend the last 30 minutes of the general inspection. That way, when a buyer provides a list of repairs that they're requesting, I can explain to my client why they are requesting that. I can explain what the inspector actually told the buyer. Because the inspectors typically walk through the house in the last 30 minutes of their inspection and explain all of the defective items to the buyer. So I just follow along behind them. Most sales have loans. So I want to make sure that I'm in contact with that loan officer so I know what is going on. Why hasn't the appraisal been ordered? You know, where at the end of the transaction, when are we going to be expecting loan docs? When are the funds going to be at the escrow company so that we can close on time? One thing that I do is I always talk to the loan officer before I even call my client about the offer that we received. That way I can kind of vet them out. And when I think that loan officer may not be as professional, well versed in the lending process, then I will do a counter offer for my seller. And one of the items that I put into that would be to have the buyer cross qualify with my trusted lender. That way I'm not wasting my time with a buyer that may not be able to qualify to actually buy the house. Because I believe I can always make more money, I cannot get my time back. Another person that I'm in contact with is the buyer's agent's transaction coordinator. I wanna make sure that all the documentation is moving quickly, getting back the buyer signed documents into my file so that we know everything is good. And finally, the one person that isn't typically in a traditional transaction is the probate attorney. So I am frequently in contact with a probate attorney. 
in the desired manner that they want, which could be email or phone calls. That way they know that I'm working hard to get the transaction through. So what we want is to keep moving things forward. We want to get things done on time according to the contract. And that way, at the end of the transaction, the attorney will be thrilled with the help that we provided to their client. And having an outrageously happy attorney will lead to your next client because they're gonna think about you, they think about me, whenever they have a new client because they trust that you can get the job done. So that's how I keep things moving forward and I increase my sales year after year. I hope you found this of value. If you did, give me a thumbs up, write a comment below, or if you have a question, post that. I'll be sure to answer it. And be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button. That way you'll be notified of my weekly videos and you wouldn't wanna miss any of them. Have a great week.